Hello and welcome to this example. Uh, this week we're going to take a look at a hollow cylinder with thick walls and a temperature gradient. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. Uh, the dimensions of this model are uh, defined for us an outer radius of 2 inch, inside radius of 1 inch, and a height of 4. So I already have Autodesk Inventor Professional 2022 open. I'm just going to hit start sketch and we'll select a plane to begin our sketch on and then I'm just going to start with a circle and we'll just draw two of those starting at the origin and then we can dimension them so the inner diameter is going to be uh, two inch and then the outer diameter is going to be four inch and then from there uh, we could extrude this four inches. We're going to take advantage of symmetry as we often do. So I'm going to start with the line command and we'll just draw a line from the origin out vertical and then do the same thing from the origin out horizontally. And then we're going to go ahead and trim that up a little bit so that we're just left with a quarter section. There we go and we can say finish sketch and we'll extrude that and again it was a four inch tall all right so that is what we want for our geometry and i'm going to go ahead and save it before we move into the nastran environment so let me go ahead and select the folder where we're going to save this and we'll call this um, Validation 11, say. All right, and then from that point, what we can do is go ahead and get into the Nastran environment. So I'm going to go ahead and select the Environments tab, and we are going to use Autodesk Inventor Nastran. Now, um, we have to talk a little bit about how we're going to approach this model. I should explain the rest of the model, or the setup, it does have a temperature gradient. Um, so what we want to have is a temperature difference of 10 degrees Fahrenheit where the inside surface is colder than the outside. And then we're going to take a look at what the resulting stresses are as a function of that temperature gradient. There are two different ways that we can go about uh, applying temperatures in Autodesk Inventor Nastran. So let me just go ahead and select the loads menu just for a second. And if we go to loads and we take a look at the pull down list, you will see that there are load options here. Uh, for instance, the body temperature. And then you see additional things for a thermal analysis like temperature, convection, radiation. So you can apply temperatures within a linear static stress. And the instances in which you're going to do that or the times that you're going to want to do that is when either the entire body or the entire assembly is at a uniform temperature. So that analysis is something that people do every now and again. For instance, uh, you might build an assembly at 70 degrees Fahrenheit, but then it's going to go into a 400 degree Fahrenheit oven and you want to know, um, you know what happens expansion wise and, and stress wise at that elevated temperature or the inverse of that could be true it might be subjected to really cold temperatures so in those cases where you say you're going to stick it in a freezer and leave it in a freezer for some ex extended period of time or it's going to go into a really hot environment and um, reach a steady state really high temperature in that case you can do that with a linear static analysis because the entire body or assembly uh, depending on what you have, would reach a uniform temperature. In this case, we're going to have a temperature gradient. So again, it's going to be 10 degrees cooler on the inside than what it is on the outside surface. So when you have a gradient, what you actually want to do is start with a thermal analysis, and then we'll map the temperatures, all those individual nodal temperatures through the thickness, we'll map those into our linear static example. So the first thing I'm going to do is just double click on the analysis type here. And I'm going to find where that screen popped up. Let 
There we go. Sorry, it just took a minute. And um, so we're going to change the analysis type here. And we're going to set the analysis type to a thermal analysis. So we're going to do a linear steady state thermal. There are additional thermal analyses here. You can see there's a nonlinear steady state. Um, and that would be if you have nonlinear conditions in the setup of your model. So if you have uh, something that is temperature dependent, some material property, for instance, or an applied load, which is temperature dependent, that would make it nonlinear. And then you also have nonlinear transient. So if you need the time dependence, uh, you can also run it as a nonlinear transient. We're just going to do a linear and say OK to that. And then let's take a look at the materials. So there's my material screen. The material properties are defined for me. Um, so what I'm going to do is just start with you know, something like the usual material. It's pretty close to a steel. So, And I say usual, that is, if you watch uh, other videos of mine, a lot of times I use a steel A36. Um, this one says that our material properties are going to be a Poisson's ratio of 0.3 which it is. Young's modulus is going to be 30E6, so small change there. 30E6. And our thermal coefficient of expansion is going to be 6E-6. So we just need to get rid of a couple extra digits there. And I think we are otherwise good. Uh, we'll go ahead and say OK to that. All right. Um, so we've defined the material. And the next thing that we can do is uh, define constraints and loads. We don't really need anything here for constraints. We are going to define loads though, and we're going to define our temperatures. So on the outside surface of this, I'm going to make it say zero degrees Fahrenheit, and then we'll say OK. You can see a symbol gets added indicating that a temperature has been applied. And then since we want the inside surface to be 10 degrees colder than that, of course, we're going to select load. We'll go into temperature, select that inside surface, and that would be minus 10. Okay, next thing that we're going to do is go ahead and mesh this model. So we'll say generate mesh and see what we get. I think that looks pretty good. Yeah, that's fine. Let's go ahead and run it. This model has 16,810 nodes, just to give you uh, some indication of, of what the scale of this model is and, and how fast it solves. So it's pretty quick. And again, I'm not using any sort of supercomputer here. It's just a several year old laptop at this point. Um, so there's our temperature. So the inside surface is at minus 10 and the outside surface is at zero. And then of course we can see a gradient through the thickness. So that is what we wanted to get out of our thermal analysis. So then what we're going to do again is map those those individual temperatures into our our linear static analysis and see um, what our stresses are. So let's go ahead and say return so we can get out of the results environment. We'll right click on analysis one and we're going to tell it to duplicate that. And so it makes a copy of everything. I'm just going to rename our second analysis to something logical, like analysis 2. And again, we're going to change the analysis type. So now we are switching back to a linear static analysis. OK, so again, analysis 1 is our steady state heat transfer. So if we need to go back and look at those temperatures, we can just right click on that analysis and activate it. Uh, but right now, we've duplicated it, and we're saying analysis 2 is going to be our linear static. All right, so what do we need to do before we run the model? First of all, in the material here, uh, what we want to do is we're going to add to this a, a stress-free reference temperature. So the model needs to know, you know, given the applied loads, is it expanding or contracting from there? So uh, we're going to say that uh, our T-ref in this case is zero degrees, right? So um, that gives us the inner surface being a, a, a delta T when it's figuring out its, its thermal contraction in this case of, of 10 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, let's go ahead and say OK to that. 
Now, and before I move on with that, a lot of times I was given that example where you might have a part or an assembly where it's manufactured in a in a 70 degree uh, Fahrenheit environment, and you're going to take it and, and put it in a 400 degree Fahrenheit oven. In that case, then then yes, when you define that stress rate reference temperature, um, that T ref, um, then in that case you would utilize that's under the material properties. In that case, you would define the T ref as 70 degrees Fahrenheit, and then you know apply 400 degrees to your model which means that your delta T in that case then would be an appropriate uh, 330 degrees in, the, in that hypothetical example. But uh, in this case, we're just really looking for the, the temperature gradient you know, from uh, what we solved in our, in our steady state heat transfer analysis. Let me go ahead and get rid of the two loads that are on here. We don't need those anymore. Those are the thermal loads. We're going to remove those. We don't need them. Keep in mind, we're going to import all the nodal temperatures. I do need to add some constraints here, and um, let me go ahead and clear all those that it came up with. And that's because of the symmetry, and now we're in linear static stress, so I need to stabilize the model. So here, selecting this face, the X is perpendicular to that face, so I'm going to choose an X symmetry, and we'll say OK. And then we'll rotate the model around. We can see that face is a Z, so we'll go constraint select that face and that's a Z symmetry and then lastly on the bottom of this model the vector perpendicular there is the Y so we will choose Y symmetry and select that face there we go now uh, lastly before we run the model would be the loads and in this case the loads are just the temperatures that we're pulling in from the from the heat transfer analysis so the way that you do that, uh, under type, there is an option near the bottom of the list that says from output. So then what we do is we go browse and we just browse back into the, um, into the directory where we stored that model before. And in my case, this was, uh, that was called, I can't remember what I called it. What did I call it? the validation 11 there it is could have just looked at the top of the screen it's a little late in the day <laughs> so under validation 11 right um, when you do an analysis on a model whatever your CAD part name is if it were hypothetically called bracket uh, when you do a simulation in Nastran then it creates a a folder and inside that folder is a subfolder named in CAD um, so you would Go, if your model was called bracket, you would look for a folder called bracket, and then inside there would be the NCAD folder. Inside there you will find an FEA folder, and then what we're looking to um, load in would be the .fno file, and I can kind of confirm it's 11.29.2021, and um, so it says that this file was created at 8.14, so that was a few minutes ago. Yes, that is the file that we want to grab. So that is the file that contains all of our nodal temperatures and um, that is the the type of load that we want to put onto this model we can go ahead and say OK to that nothing else we need to do here we don't need to remesh it or anything at this point we can just execute the analysis And while that's solving, we'll bring over our spreadsheet. Of course, I have a spreadsheet here uh, so that we can compare our values to what the theoretical values are. Uh, and it is our Rourke and Young, as usual, 5th uh, edition, 1975, page 585, section 15.6, case 16. So that's where the source of the model came from. And we need to take a look at one of the hoop stresses. So uh, on this face, what is this? This is the YZ face. Uh, we could take a look at the X. Or if I rotate the model around, there we go, a little bit like that. And zoom in. This, as you can see from the mini axis, is the XY face. Uh, so Z is perpendicular. So we could take a look at a stress tensor. Uh, in the Z direction and what we're going to do is compare the inside corner and the exterior corner 
uh, to what our, our values are. So let's go ahead and take a look at uh, Z normal. And then to inquire on that point, what I'm going to do is turn off the deform shape here just to make sure that I'm clicking on the appropriate nodes inside and outside. I don't need to see that exaggerated shape. Um, so if I right click on nodes and I say query display, there I can see that value there is 1570 uh, at the inner surface. So if I type that in, you can see it's pretty close to theoretical. So 1570, and I hit enter, we are at 0.2% uh, uh, difference than what the, the theoretical solution is. And if I select this node right here, we can see that's a value of 997 or minus 997. And if we put that value in, plug that value in, minus 997, and hit enter, there we have a percent difference of 0.1. So, so very good. Uh, agreement between what the book values say and uh, our inventor Nastran results this time. So hopefully you enjoyed that. Uh, thanks for watching. You have a great day.